The Arduino system is great for learning to code and build electronics projects, but it can be a bit difficult to get started with the circuits and getting sensors to work. So let's look at how we can make that a lot easier. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. The Arduino microcontroller boards are a great platform to learn coding and to get into the whole making project scene. They are cheap and easy to set up and have fantastic support with development tools and ready-made library code for pretty much any application or piece of electronics that you can think of. But when you're first starting out, the idea of connecting up circuits and then programming them, along with finding the right sets of drivers and linking those into your projects can seem a bit daunting. So this is where this all-in-one starter kit from LA Crew really helps out. This is, well, as it says, an all-in-one solution to starting out with the Arduino system. What you get is an Arduino Uno that's pre-connected to a wide range of sensors and actuators, all neatly packaged inside an easily transportable case. So all you need to do is to set up your PC or laptop with the Arduino development software, plug in the box, and you're instantly ready to start coding. So let's take a closer look. So the kit is based around a built-in Arduino Uno compatible board, which uses the normal ATmega328P microcontroller. So that gives you then the standard 2 kilobytes of RAM and 32 kilobytes of flash memory for your code. Now the board uses both the I2C bus and direct I/O pin connections to drive 15 sensors. Now these are a 10 amp 250 volt relay. A, an LCD which has got 16 by 2 characters, a servo motor, a buzzer, an ultrasonic sender and receiver unit for distance measurements, a passive infrared sensor for movement sensing, a linear potentiometer, a temperature and humidity sensor, a light level sensor, a three axis accelerometer, a simple LED output, a microphone, a simple push button input, an infrared remote control unit, and then a separate moisture sensor. Now, on top of these built in sensors, there are some expansion IO ports which use the Elecro Crowtail connectors that allow you to add even more components from their sensor range. Now, each sensor and output is neatly labelled with either its pin number or I2C bus address so you know how to connect to them in the software. Now, connection to your computer is via a USB type C port on the side. And of course, the Arduino IDE that you're going to use to program this is compatible with Windows, Linux and Mac OS. And it also has an online IDE for Chromebook use. Now, the included manual is going to take you through 21 coding lessons that show you how to use every single part of this kit. And this is all backed up then with a code repository that you can get to from the main product page so that you don't have to type everything in from scratch. Um, but, but I'll talk a bit more about that in, in a little bit. So all in all, uh, you've got a complete learning tool to get you up to speed with using Arduinos in your projects. Now, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to need to use the Arduino Integrated Development Environment, or, or IDE, to be able to do anything with the Arduino boards. So you'll need to, first of all, head over to the main Arduino website. And from there, then open up the products menu and go to the Arduino IDE link. Now, this is the main application that allows you to write your code, upload it to the microcontroller and really develop your projects. Now, it is available for most desktop operating systems, so just download the one for you and install it onto your computer. Again, if you're using a Chromebook, you're, you're still OK, as there is a link on here then for the online IDE that you can use to do exactly the same task. So now that we've got a development environment, we need to make sure that we can, we can connect to the kit. So plug the board into your computer using the USB-C connection. Then in your IDE, go into the Tools menu and then go to the Boards option and navigate to the Arduino Uno listing. So we're going to select this then as the board that we'll be using. 
So now go back to your tools menu and we're going to select the port option. So you should see a couple of COM ports listed. So, so I've got COM1 and COM3 on my PC here. So we just need to work out which one it is. So, so if I first of all then select COM1, I can test it by going back to the tools menu and trying to get the board info. So this makes the computer talk to the board and ask it what type of board it is. So for me on, on COM1, I'm getting an error message coming back and that's telling me that there isn't a board connected to that port. So if I now repeat the process on COM3, you'll see that I've connected to the board and I'm getting data back from it. So, so your computer might not be able to recognize the board as it's not a true Arduino Uno, so it might come back as an unknown board. Um, but again, as long as we get some information being reported back, we are connected to the board. So we're now ready to start some coding. So the kit is designed to teach you how to code how to understand how the Arduino works and how the electronics are connected to the Arduino to allow you to make your own projects. So if you go across to the main product page, there's quite a bit of support material to help you do that. So if you scroll down to the bottom of the um, product page, you'll find there are some links down there. So of course we have a link then to a digital copy of the user manual. We also have then a link to a wiki page. So if you head across to that, You'll see that it does take you through lots of information about the actual um, device itself. Now, one of the important things here is that we have a resources section at the bottom. So if you go down there, you'll see there's a GitHub link out to a code repository. So if we head across out to that. You'll see that we then have access to all of the code and libraries and also the circuit diagrams for how the actual kit is constructed. So you can come out here, if we go into the courses code bit, you'll see that for each of the lessons we have a folder and inside that you'll find the actual Arduino sketch file. So you can actually just simply download this or, or you can actually open the file up directly inside this wiki page and actually just simply copy out the code from there. And that of course would save you typing that. Now, um, I'm not going to advise you to actually do that. So, so one of the best ways of seeing how the code works is to actually type it in yourself. So just copying and pasting, you don't really read the code. It, it just becomes a matter of copy, paste, click, go, and the code is working. Typing it in forces you to go through each command statement to see how it's structured, what it does, and how to build up a full application. So, so let's start then with the very first um, lesson, which is the simple flashing LED app, as, as this doesn't need any further setup. So in the manual, you'll get a full code listing. So in our Arduino IDE, we simply need to open up a new sketch. And first off then, we're gonna save this so that we can create a new project on our hard drive. Now, now by default, the Arduino IDE saves your sketches, um, and, and that's what we call our code files in an Arduino, um, into its own folder. So we can open up our sketches folder and then make a new folder in size that was going to be for our all-in-one kit sketches. Now inside that, I can name my program file, and the IDE will then create a new subfolder and save the code in there. So this means that we'll now have a sketch folder for all of our little mini projects on this particular kit. So once the code is saved, we then simply need to go through and type in the listing from the manual. Now, when you're doing this, you do have to be very accurate and type it in exactly as shown with all the exactly the same punctuation. So we're working here in a language called C++ and it will not let you run the code unless it's all typed in correctly. Again, so we need to have it correctly formatted as it is in the code listing. So once the code is ready, again, uh, we need to save it before we try to run it. Then once we know that the IDE is connected to the board, we can just simply click the upload button at the top left of the IDE window. So this will start the code compi compiling, which is where our C++ compiler, which is built into the IDE, translates our code listing into commands that the microcontroller board can understand. So once that's completed, it will send the code down to the kit, and you should then see your first project up and running and a flashing LED. 
So congratulations, you're now an Arduino coder. Now, as you progress through the exercises, you'll start to use more and more of the attached devices. So if we jump ahead here to lesson four, we get to the first one where we use the LCD panel that's built into the box. So this panel is connected to the Arduino using something called an I squared C connection. So this is a way of allowing the microcontroller to send messages and commands to another part of the circuit using only two IO pins on the Arduino. But it does need some code to be able to run this I squared bus in, in the form of a driver. So this is one of the really powerful features of the Arduino system. So we need code to run our LCD display so that we can simply tell it to show some text messages. So the Arduino IDE has built in support to allow us to find, download, and install these libraries and drivers that help us do these tasks directly from within its own library manager. So if you look at the code for this project, you'll see that the library statements are at the top of the listing. So we have here a hash include, and then the name of the library file itself. So, so the hash include statement, that tells the compiler to go and grab some extra code from the file specified so that we can then use it in our program. So if I try to compile the program at the moment, it's going to throw up an error saying that it couldn't find that library file. So to fix this, we need to install the library. So if you go into the tools menu and then manage libraries, um, so, so make sure that the type and topic are set to all, and then we can type the name of the library into the search box. So we're looking for the Adafruit Liquid Crystal. So um, we should now get it pop up for us. And again, we can see it's listed here. So, so just select the install option. Now, when you install some libraries, these in turn use other sub libraries. And, and we can see these then as these things called dependencies. So in other words, our LCD library that we want to use depends on us also having these additional bits of code. So accept the dependencies prompt and the IDDE will then download and install all of our missing libraries. So if we now go back to our sketch, um, we can now try to recompile that and our compiler should now be happy and we should get the nice message appearing on our LCD panel once that's all sent up to the board. So you should now be able to work through the code examples and try out all of the different devices. So the manual does take you through each of these programs in great detail, explaining what's happening at each stage. It also shows you some of the circuit diagrams that are needed to get these devices to connect with the Arduino. So again, it's, it's not simply a matter of just wiring the device directly to it. Um, so hopefully you'll start to see the advantage of using this all-in-one solution. So once you've been through all of these exercises, you can of course then use this kit to start building up your own projects, either using the built-in board modules, or you can use these extra crow tail connections then to plug in a whole range of other sensors and devices. So all that's left for you now is to get on with the projects. So I hope you find this video useful. Uh, please do have a look at this uh, to get you easily started on your Arduino coding and project um, journey. If you want to find more electronics, coding and making projects, then please do make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you've enjoyed the video, do click that like button as well, please. So I look forward to seeing you again in another video very soon. And bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website.